Hi everybody, uh, it's uh, really delightful. I'm really delightful and happy to be here because I still remember the first time I saw the Mutt talks on the Smashing Magazine about uh, basically headless and how they re rebuild the Smashing Magazine website. That was like really awesome, and I cannot like uh, imagine at that time I cannot imagine that I will be standing here on the stage. Anyway, let's jump to the talk. So yes, this works, and I will start a little bit different. I will start with the questions because uh, something that I like jump on me uh, a few times already in the social media and LinkedIn and uh, Twitter or X or whatever we call it now. And uh, there was like few articles like saying like monoliths are coming back. They are striking back, and uh, composable or headless way is uh, way too complex. It's complicated. It's not so easy to build or something like that. So not only. It is a really cool reference to the best Star Wars movie out there, most probably Empire Strikes Back, so maybe also like Monolith's Empires, you know, their Strikes Back, but also it's a good question. So I'm a little bit provocative maybe, is headless dying? Is it like something that is really happening and what is currently happening? So that will be like point of my talk and uh, maybe some of you could ask now like why I'm talking about that so because uh, of course I'm coming from the headless CMS, but I was before that not only the head of the product, I was running also the, uh, the DevRel team, the story blog, and before that I was building the website. I found, looking and tried almost every framework out there, the JavaScript framework. I was really like trying the best to find out how is the best way to build uh, the modern websites, projects, products. And I spoke with all of the probably major story blog clients from uh, education first uh, to Altly and others, and uh, I heard what they are saying. So, but first of all, a little bit about the story block. So the story block is a headless CMS, which uh, as you can see, our mission is not only to be most load headless CMS, but in general the CMS. And uh, we are trying to enable basically the users, and that I mean all the users, not only the content editors, to really like work very effectively in the with the content in every stage of the life cycle. And I will also touch that a little bit more. And what is really exceptional about Storybook, and that's the two things that I would mention. And that's first, like everybody, like usually when I ask, they say like we have a real-time visual editor, something which we can see like a lo lot more to showing up also in other competitors, or like in general also with Netlify Create. But we also are component-based uh, CMS. So that is something that uh, it's not so common, and I would definitely recommend you to check it out what I mean with that. But now maybe I would ask, and I don't see you like everybody like exactly, but how many of you are using any headless CSS? So hands up. I would love to be, be to, to see it. Like I see the two hands from the field, so he's using at least two headless CMSs. And I, I would expect even more heads up, uh, hands up, uh, to be honest. And uh, that's still like, good because like, I still think like, we should think about and talk about that what is headless about. Because like, this is also something that is sometimes very confusing, especially when I talk to the client, clients, the enterprise clients, uh, or also like, to, through the marketing team or sales team. A lot of people tell you like, it's about the API. So if you have an API, you are suddenly headless. But this is something I don't really think it's a true, and I think it would be way too easy to say only like, hey, you have an API, you are suddenly headless. It's something that's happening basically in the approach, how we are going to set up our projects. So something that's like a really change of the, in your, our mind and thinking and how we structure the content. We really need to think about, uh, we really need to think about how we are going to set up the content because in the past times, in the past where most of the monoliths was created, we were building the webs. We were basically didn't think about how the content should uh, be consumed by the, I don't know, like Apple Watches or artificial intelligence or different types of UI or any presentation layer that even don't know how it will be created. But in the modern, headless CMSs, we are talking about the structure of the content, and I would say and uh, always uh, advocate for content-first approach. Think what is the best and most effective way for your content to live in, and how then you will be uh, approaching and requesting that content from that system. At the end of the day, this will bring you, of course, the freedom, the flexibility, and sometimes, of course, it's also not the most easy way, but I still think it's the best way that we currently have. And, but, and the most, and this is a word that I heard already a few times here today, it's a very robust approach. It uh, maybe sounds a little bit more work on the beginning, but it's a robust approach because you can scale it up, scale it down, you can really work with all of those different frameworks, and you can like really work in the future. 
But as I would be more, even more provocative here, and it's like, I say like, don't be only headless in this way, because it's not, or we are not headless because we wanted to be headless. It was never about, uh, head, uh, headless was never about being headless. I think it was the best answer in the times when we when the modern JavaScript frameworks uh, uh, was created, and there was like uh, basically missing flexibility from all monoliths to really like be able to use those frameworks. So that's why I'm saying like we should solve the challenges and bring the efficiency. And if you look why, and if I also speak mostly with uh, the analysts from different. Uh, organizations or also the people from the industry, from our clients, they are done looking first for the headless or being a composable. They first look, they, we want to be more efficient. We want to be faster. We want to create. We want to enable our editors, content editors, marketers, search engine optimization experts, uh, and all of those people to create the new stuff very quickly and efficiently. And the best way to do that is headless or as we call it now also composable way. So that maybe come, let's go back to the question why some are saying it's dying or like one are saying that it's complex, it's complicated and it's not so easy to set up the whole thing. And I think it's uh, not dying definitely. I'm coming from Storyboy, which we say we are headless CMS still. So uh, we don't think so it's dying, but there's like a big change. It's getting transformed. And it's getting transformed from very single reason, and this is where I would get back to the also Matt uh, opening uh, talk, where we are already switching from uh, uh, being approached by only the uh, innovators uh, and early adopters to the majority. So basically, it's not anymore about those developers or those agencies who are living in the bleeding edge tech or on the living, uh, bleeding edge technology, but it's already the big enterprise companies that are coming to us because they heard about that cool approach called headless composable and they would like to switch. They want to be efficient at all others. I hear that from the big clients as education first, Spendes, Reynolds, Altly, Adidas, Netflix, Tesla, and we have like a lot of other clients where we are talking in Storyblog about that and we seeing and uh, like encountering new challenges. So the challenges in the past time, like last three years, when we, when we were jumping on the demos as a DevRels in Storyblock, it was about like, okay, there's a client coming to me and that usually like we are using this Next.js Next and we already have uh, hosting on the Netlify when we look, need to find out how to uh, solve the, uh, the content management. And they will ask, are you able to support us in that? But now it's, changing. It's changing to the point that they want to for, hear for us how they should build it, how we, can be, how we can do this stuff and how we can create our new digital project. And that's something that we need to talk to the developers that spent last 20 years, maybe in the PHP platform or like Java platforms, and suddenly we want to tell them like there is a new way to headless and that doesn't work the way that you used to be. So we need to break those old habits and basically change them. And that's why I think the most, the, the biggest three challenges we have right now in the industry uh, is definitely the migration that you heard a lot uh, today about. And the migration is uh, how they should move all that content they have in the old, uh, old process or old world to the new world. And it's our job and our mission to really show them that and help them to do that. The second thing is definitely education, or we can also say enablement, where we need to enable them to understand how to do that. So we need to provide even more tutorials, like workshops, certifications, and literally let them know uh, how they should do that. So maybe adding them the scripts and, uh, uh, and, and stuff like that. And the last thing is definitely the tooling, where we are spending a lot of time in Storyblock, uh, I think like on uh, the first two we could spend even more, but the first, the, the second one is where I'm quite happy because we need to provide the tooling that they shouldn't figure out how to build it. They really should go there, install one package, let's say from uh, uh, npm, and then uh, write three lines of code, it was like setup, configure, and go and build the website. They shouldn't be building the backend or figuring out how we should request the data from the story block or any other system. And that's the point that we need to provide a really rich SDKs tooling and really enable them. I also like set up uh, for them already templates or maybe uh, some stuff where can they have a library of components that they can uh, easily buy uh, that are enterprise ready and then of course edit them 
headless way. And the last thing maybe I will say here, finally we can have a strong opinions. Because in the past, we were like always saying like, choose your best, uh, the best of the breed, the tools that you want, the uh, vendors that you think. But now we know the situation. We know how the headless or composable works the best, and we can come with opinions and say like, okay, there's a customer, we want to build this e-commerce uh, e commerce website or project, and we can say like, okay, then take a story block, take the commons layer, host it on Netlify, for the search use uh, uh, one of the, like Algolia and the other platforms, if we want the personalization, do this. Or if we replace this, and here's a tutorial for it, here is a sample of the code, and all of that. And that's also, of course, uh, the, oh, the opportunity for all of the partners here who can also prepare those stuff and have an advantage, advantage uh, in the market because you can be fast and efficient. Sometimes, however, you would also hear that uh, AI will be the answer. And I know like, this sounds a little bit off, and the AI will help us maybe to build a better web, but I feel still that AI is a super powerful tool and, uh, but it will not answer in our world. Because we still have all those processes that we cannot really always replace. But the AI will help us be more efficient in those processes. So when we are talking about the content authoring, translations, uh, maybe uh, how to, uh, giving like insights on how the schema of the project look like. If this is a right setup, of this is not uh, too complex, or is it like uh, no, uh, the search engine, uh, search en is it really efficient for search engine uh, engines, and stuff like that. So let's try not to think that AI will solve everything for us, because at the end of the day, it can happen that uh, we will have just a lot of AI in our content management tools, but the user will still struggle with how to use it. And uh, that brings me to the point where I think we really should think more about the users. And here when I say the users, it's uh, connected to it because of all of those processes. And when I say the users, I don't think only developers. Those are the, of course, the most important, most probably. But we need to think about who are all the, our users. And I can tell you, like, we always think, especially in the content management, uh, uh, systems that our users are like developers and editors, but that's in reality not the true, because we have there also like those other people who are like designing the website, who are translating the website, uh, the people who are going to set up your uh, search engine, uh, the people who are looking on the performance, accessibility experts, and of course there is, we don't have to forget the leadership and the C-level who want to see how the website will look like or your project before you will publish it. And all of those people need to collaborate on the creation process, where we need to enable them to be better. So I think that one of the key is also the collaboration, where they need to collaborate together from the beginning to the, ben, uh, to the end. And when I say the beginning, I mean really the blank page where you start to draw and say like, okay, I have this idea for the project or for this landing page, and I would like to have it this. So before you jump to the Figma, and at the end, I mean like two, three years after you deploy or publish your first uh, version of your website to think about how we can look on it, how the schema looks like of uh, my page, how the sitemap is it, where is my content living, and how it's everything connected together. So I think like we have a lot of opportunities, especially at the beginning and the end, and bridging that with our users and letting them better collaborate through the whole process and break the never-ending cycle of define, design, develop, create, and basically creating the ticket. So we need, we should remove the blockers and pave the, uh, the way for that. And uh, for that, I would love to show you maybe a little demo. And I think in a moment we'll start uh, the video where we can show you like how it's look like in a story block. If uh, you would like to collaborate with your VPs or with your uh, managers uh, and uh, editors and uh, reviewers, we'll collaborate together. So now I'm waiting for the video, so let's hope it will start. Otherwise, I will need to explain it on this. So here we still see the story block, and that's already like we jump a, f a few seconds. But anyway, like here I'm asking as a Samuel 
my editor to like edit and make this website look a little bit more like a com uh, Netlify Compose. And there you can see also like as I'm setting the statuses and uh, also uh, assigning that to the different uh, user. So now I assign to the editor. The editor directly see like what is assigned to him. Uh, also is able to jump non on not only to the uh, to the page but also a comment directly, which was mentioned. So it scroll down to the to that point and not only. Here yeah, he can, like, of course, communicate together with uh, manager, reviewer, or VP there, but he's also already able to scroll and see the real-time preview of it. So as it's changing the, uh, the it's uh, adjust the video, it can change uh, the layout. If uh, the developers created options for it, so if the, if click on a comment, it will scroll down to the right moment, uh, to the right part of the page. Again, comment. Edit uh, the picture of it, and then very quickly update uh, the headline. Just taking from the uh, Compose uh, uh, ne even net uh, website, it's already updated uh, text in a seconds that you even don't see that uh, change. Uh, adjust a little bit picture, change uh, the uh, brightness and the blur, and as soon as it's happy, it will save it. It can go change uh, the workflow status uh, to uh, the reviewing. Send it uh, with the email also. To the reviewer now, as a reviewer, I'm like again seeing like okay, there's something waiting for me. I can jump directly to the website. I can show check it on the Netlify how it will look like uh, in a browser. So you can even like send it to your mobile anywhere you would like to preview it. Again, say resolve the comment. Say like everything is okay. Thanks. Uh, that was a good work. Very quick and uh, change it to ready to publish. And uh, according to the permission and rights, you would uh, have right to publish it or not. And then after that, click it, click, and it's published. And I was very quickly show how the collaboration could look like, and uh, that was I basically stripped like 90% uh, of other features of Storyblock, of course. There. And as I said, at the end of the day, you will host it where you love, so probably Netlify, Wink, and uh, <laughs> and if you want. Uh, then you can try it also with your own code, your favorite framework on storyblock.com uh, com slash technologies with uh, Next.js, uh, Nuxt, uh, Astro, and any other uh, basically frameworks, all of them are there. And maybe last few words. Uh, so uh, we still have a long way to do and to be the most loved uh, CMS or in general like industry to be like the main, uh, main way to build uh, the, any digital projects to replace, I would say, like monoliths. But we have so many opportunities to improve, especially in the concepting, developing, and generating phase. So at the beginning of the projects uh, and the end of the projects, where we can pro provide so much value to our users, to different business users, and not only the developers. But still, we should keep in the mind that the point, and the most important, is the managing content, and we should empower our users to create better apps and web the composable way, because I think so far there is not better and more efficient way as the composable way. Thank you. That's all from me. <laughs>